Hello everybody and welcome back to a second attempt of showing the rim world with the mods I currently have which are all in one mod and the machine guns nests. I will be adding the arachnid mod once it gets up and running. The arachnid mod is actually taking the enemies from the awesome movie Starship Troopers if you have not seen it. By God, please, please go see that movie. Uh, the second one kind of odd I didn't really like it it was different more so than the first one like just really out there the third one wasn't too bad I actually saw the anime 2 which was really good but the all in one mod has better power plus by architect has the clutter mod by Morofa the rim rats by Argain resource compression by Morofa again so he's in here twice which adds new crates, benches, traders, meat, stuff like that, which, which is really nice, good way to make money. Alpha Muffalo by Karid, Project Armory by Evil. This actually adds Project Armory a bunch of weapons. It's very nice. Power Switch by Haplo. There is Embrasures by Ponishi R007. Oh, Punisher. Ha! Huh. I'm a derp. Miscellaneous Plus May by Haplo. Cannons and turrets by again Punisher. Mushroom mod by me. Meteorite mod by me. Which I'm assuming me would be Jeth Jerethi fifty, or maybe that's actually just their name. Me, who knows? Jaxa shields by Jaxa and Dark Kier. Synth meat by Psycho Sama. Wood economy tweaks by Itchy Flea. The map gen pack by Itchy Flea, and the colonist creation mod by Argain. Now. These are very big game changers. Embrasures are something I hope that they will actually implement without a mod into the game because it's a great, great idea. Same with mushrooms, the rim rats, the alpha muffalo, and the map gen pack. I, I really enjoy all of them. There's only two things in the map gen pack I really hate, but they're there. There's nothing I can do with it. Machine gun nests are just basically manned machine gun nests with different guns you can get on it. So I'm going to close this. I'm just going to quickly jump into one of my other videos. Or not, huh, videos. Herp a derp. Into one of my other mods that I have been playing. One of my saves. Sorry. And I'm going to show it to you. This is Dark Dale. Darkwing Duck actually was on Boomerang the other night when I was deciding to play. I'm like, I don't know what to name my colony. And I was like, screw it. I'm going to name it Darkdale. That is no, not the name of the town in Darkwing Duck. I was just thinking of Chippendale Rescue Rangers and Darkwing Duck was on, so I decided to name it that. Now, it is me, two, three real life friends, and oh, give me, whoa, whoa. I'm going to stop this here and I'm going to have to splice the video. Be right back. Alright, sorry about that, guys. going to have to do some magic editing there. But this is basically my modded version, as you can see. Bunch of rim rats that I had to kill. They decided to go nuts and kill my colony. These are the embrasures. You can shoot through these. So nice. So very, very nice to have these. You can just come to this wall, hide there. This is the mortar that I have. The range. This is the short range. You actually cannot fire inside this range. So these mortars actually are a bit different like you would think okay anything inside of the ring you can shoot but for this is actually anything outside of the ring so I think what they actually should have done is instead of the white outline is maybe made it red that way to help understand better maybe I don't know but yeah anything outside you can shoot so basically anything on this map anywhere I could shoot to this is actually part of the map gen this is a normal map that regens this is actually, I believe, what he added, which would be the valley, where you're between two mountains. I actually dug into a bit, because uh, the generator was here, the steam geyser, so I put it there. Then I made a room where I have the packing machine, the machining table, the stone cutters, the butchers, the cook stove, the textile bench. I have a resource table here that has some bricks on it. The meat cannery, the vegetable cannery, the slag refinery that is all stuff that not all of it but some of it is stuff that's added with the mods I actually have that is a bug that is a very very big bug 
Oh wow. Yeah. I might actually have to reload this. It seems to have bugged out. <laughs> wow. That is not good. I might not actually have turned back on my... No, I did turn back on my mods when I joined, I'm pretty sure. But, this is a threat sensor that would go to a, uh, to the wall here. And then I did have a threat sensory light uh, alert lamp right over here that's connected to the wall. You can have it anywhere as long as it's connected to the same power conduit as the threat sensor. And it'll change colors depending on the threat. If it's just like Rimrad's attacking, it goes yellow, buffalo. If it's a raid, it turns red, which is pretty cool. We have the mushrooms, the, the synth meat. This is the actual um, terraformer that makes a little puddle that you can put a clay extractor. Get it put into the clay compressor and then it gets automatically pulled out by the automatic clay oven and it'll make clay bricks to make walls. As you can see here, a bunch of different foods that get added, some cotton fibers that you need to make cloth. And there are my stone bricks, the orbital trade beacon so I can trade. But you see here, you can get mushrooms, you can get tomato vines, you can get carrot plants, you can get strawberry plants, you can get lettuce. There is actually another mod that added a lot more other food, but I don't think it's being updated anymore. You had all this, plus you had, I believe, blueberries, blackberries, alien berries, and I'm trying to think what else. I, off the top of my head, I can't think of what else. If I don't remember if this is saved before oh yeah this is after so right here you can see the scythers they're from the mechanoid hive they've been dead for 4.8 days they are crazy hard they could basically two shot this actually is shortly after she has not fully healed yet uh, she is very jacked up she has 50 health that was in two shots 50 health right there by the way was ridiculous I have all my guns and stuff here Oh, there are blackberry bushes. I don't know if that's in-game or just normal, but... So, also, I have down here where I found another geyser. I just dug down through. Got that there. Then, down here, I was making another room because one of the cool things you can get with this pack... If I go to production, is it? No, yes, production. So, you need to research mining or digging, and then once you research digging, you get, I believe some kind of cutting let, let me go here let me check research so what you want to do first is as you can see I have researched a ton and as you can see here there's still a ton left of research so it adds a bunch more research which is very nice but as you will see where is it where is it you get digging and then you get drilling then you get laser drilling and when you get laser drilling you get the laser drill now this takes a crap fantastic ton of power and takes about seven in-game days in order to actually drill a hole uh, then I believe the laser drill disappears automatically once that geyser is built and you can either put a coal miner there to mine the coal off the side linings and run I believe if I go into power there should be somewhere I believe that actually yeah okay so they're jacked up I'm gonna have to fix these. My mods might not actually have activated. So, some of them did, some of them didn't. I will have to see what's going on there, see if I can fix that. But, believe that you can research a thing to burn coal, which is nice. Or you can just plop down another geyser and then there adds more power. So, eventually in the long run, I will have three geysers each that pump out. Originally, 3,600 watts. Right now I'm pumping out 4,950 and the main reason for that is because a lot of the new security weapons you can get actually require a craptastic ton of power. The Sentinel turret I believe requires 1,200 in order just to run properly. The sniper turret requires, how much sniper turret isn't too much, yeah 350. This has an insane range as you can see here minimum range is 1 so right in here around it it can't shoot. I'm actually going to have to go check on my dog in a second start barking for some reason. But anywhere inside this huge range, it can snipe. And I mean, this thing does damage. I've seen it take out arachnids in two shots, which arachnids are pretty powerful. I'm actually going to probably try and add it after this to see if I can get my things to work. Now, this is the nade combat dummy. 
this will distract enemies from shooting at you because they, they consider it a person. I don't really use it. I've never actually used it. And I don't see a point in it. If you do get the Arachnid mod, I would highly recommend Barbed Wire. As Barbed and eventually you can get Charged Wire. They end up hitting and dying very, very quickly, which I don't understand why. But I use it. I'm going to make a Fallout Bunker somewhere that all my people can run into. And it just has a bunch and they just get jacked up. Now, the only problem with that is that your people actually can end up running into the wire, and the Arachnids are smart. If you leave a, a little walkway there, they will actually go and walk down that pathway, so it's very difficult to do. You kind of almost have to make yourself like something like this, and then have like a long path through that snakes around, and then comes out through another area. And then just maybe build like some kind of stone walls or something. I, I haven't really messed with it too much to figure out how to possibly do that. Because really there'd be no way to, to set the barbed wire behind you. So to me, I feel like barbed wire is useless. Unless you have it basically lining like kind of the inside of the map here. Like here maybe where your people don't go so that they spawn in near the edge and have to run across it. But to me, that just takes away the effect. You could just basically put up a big wall, make it like three thick around the whole entire inside, and then eventually any mob, arachnids and all, will actually get bored. If they take too, take too long to be able to break in and get to you, they will get bored and just leave. Same with, with raiders. They just get bored and they're like, oh, I'm done. I'm leaving. I'm not dealing with you. Which is kind of stupid, but you know, it is what it is. But I'm going to leave you guys here. And probably a couple of long minute video here, but that's basically what I want to show mud. You know, just all the stuff that gets added with it, and all the stuff that I still have yet to actually get. Uh, design tables, durability upgrades to some tables, and sniper armor plating to add more health to the sniper. You can get mobile AI. You can get uh, self propelled guns, which is basically um, allows you access to get the high explosive howitzer armor plating and, and the howitzer cannon. Yes, there is a howitzer you can get. Now, the only thing I've come to find is that I believe that all of the guns and stuff that are getting added with this, all the automatic guns will actually shoot any of the animals that are that are added and any regular in-game things. If you get the arachnid mod, I have tested. I don't know if they updated it. But they will not shoot arachnids, so you can put in these new guns and they won't touch them. The sniper tower, or the sniper turret, I believe does, and just the regular improvised turret. Everything else, I believe, does not. The mortar will, because you have to basically control the mortar yourself and the M2 nest. But like the heavy turrets, the sentinel turrets, the other stuff that I believe should be added, which is like World War II, like anti-air gun that you can use on people. Do but oh yeah, coal burning right here. Uh, do that so there's all that they don't get really get used I haven't actually um seen what the GEXO things are or the improved placements I'm actually researching that now to unlock more things and like the Gatling gun inferno cannon and as you can see that it takes a lot to get this because I'm assuming it's a highly powerful weapon and if you read it, it says the inferno cannon has often been called a cross between an incendiary launcher a sniper rifle and a bazooka it fires an explosive bolt of plasma long range and at a high speed making almost a mini artillery piece needless to say if everyone wants one so that sounds pretty overpowered a lot of these mods uh, some of them do add things that are pretty overpowered for the base game and makes it extremely easy to survive to be honest i stay away from those and a lot of people are like, no, you don't. You, you know you use it. No, I don't want it that easy. I don't enjoy adding things to a game that will make it super easy to live. A lot of people will say, oh, well, these other turrets that get added, well, they're going to make it easy to live. Yes and no. You know, you, you have to have the power to run them. You have to be able to build them in the first place. And you do. The AI, you know, system learns. So if you added a mod, it's going to start throwing a lot more, you know, AI at you randomly, usually. And, you know, they added the ability to have the people that come in and set up a little bunker and they have mortars. Well, they can easily come nowhere near you and just shoot mortars from off the screen, basically, you know, at the edge of the map. They never have to get near you. So then you need to either get your mortars and fire back or, you know, run over there and assault them. So it was kind of the way of t 
Is it not Ty? I, I don't actually know the name of the guy creating this. I'm thinking of Ty from Starbound. Um, but he basically did that so that people, you know, they're building here into the rock face, protecting yourself, where you just have these huge, like, things and you can't get touched. Well, he's like, no, I don't want that. We're going to make this difficult, add some more things that will be messing you up. So he added, you know, the more little powerful slicers, splicers, whatever these things over here are called. If I can actually click on it. Yeah, scythers. And he added the mortars just to make it a little bit more difficult and not allow you just to bunker down because mortars can come running in raining down on you they can you know destroy your roof get in through i believe they can destroy your walls they will destroy your turrets so either you're gonna have to come out or you're basically gonna basically have to try and wait them out but really when it comes to the mortar when they come in and set up their little base they get a bunch of food they get the stuff to set up the mortars and they can outweight you if you don't have your food resources inside and anywhere to go there is a new feature i believe that is actually in the base game you can lock your door now the door is locked it's not interactable they cannot get in that way if there's an insane event going on outside and you only want a couple people outside taking care of it the rest locked away safe in like a fallout shelter somewhere you can do that because wolfie here actually I got her from a event. She crashed to the planet. It was pretty messed up. And I saved her. She is incapable of violence. She will not shoot. She will not melee. She will not do anything. I have not actually tried to get her to get on a mortar to see if she would fire one. I have not tried that. I would assume not. But it'd be worth a shot eventually. But enough of me rambling. Please leave a comment. Like the video. Share it. Give me any ideas of other games you might want to see. And thanks for watching. See you next time.